Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel for another Dollar Tree Farmhouse DIY. You guys absolutely love these half lanterns so much, so I thought that I would bring you another project using them. I also picked up these cute little birdhouses the other day at Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree has finally gotten that crafter square section, and I am so excited I picked up a bunch of stuff, so definitely stay tuned for that. If you have not subscribed already, and you love Dollar Tree DIYs, farmhouse decor on a budget, and much more, I would love it if you would stick around by clicking the red subscribe button and then tapping the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. Also, give me a big thumbs up and let's jump right in. I want to be daring, baby, dance the night away. I let my head down if I want. To start off, I take all my lanterns. I bought four and I got a lot of questions where I got these at. I found them in the candle section of Dollar Tree. If you are not following me over on Instagram, definitely click the link in the description box of my um, Instagram handle and I share a lot of stuff over there. So when I went the other day, I showed the exact um, spot that I found them in in my stories so definitely go follow me over there I share a lot of stuff um, personal stuff about my pregnancy and um, just different stuff so definitely go over there and give me a follow so I started by just taking them all out of the package and then giving them all just a simple coat of white Waverly chalk paint I didn't um, go really uh, I, did, I wasn't very particular with it just because I'm going to take these outside and spray paint them in a minute. I just put the Waverly chalk paint down so that the spray paint has something to stick to. Next, I go on to the birdhouses and I just take the stickers off the bottom. And then I take white Waverly chalk paint and I only paint the bottom half of the birdhouse. I don't do the bottom bottom, but... Um, I do everything except the bottom and the roof and I just took my brush and um, around the edges close to the roof I just went really really slow and easy I took my time that way I didn't get paint all over um, the roof so after I painted both of the birdhouses at the bottom I went ahead and I painted the perch as well as the inside of that circle just so that way when you're looking at it you cannot see the uh, natural wood peeking through where the hole is. After I did that I took some regular popsicle sticks. These I did get at Dollar Tree and I knew that I wanted the edges um, that round look uh, because I'm basically going to put shingles on these roofs. I wanted to dress this up a little bit and make it look more high end and I thought that adding this touch would really make it look store bought. So I just took the end of a popsicle stick and measured how long I wanted it to hang off the edge and then I marked it and cut all my pieces. Next, I take a pack of stir sticks and I just mark where I want to cut those. I just basically cut the handles off and then I went ahead and cut those as well. I have a mini miter saw and that is linked in my Amazon favorites. If you guys want to check that out, I definitely recommend it. It's probably one of my most used tools that I have. Next, after I cut everything, I take the ends of the popsicle sticks and I take Aileen's tacky glue and I just go ahead and glue them down to the edges, leaving some of the rounded part hanging off as if they are shingles. And I wanted to mention that um, I did do seven on each end. For the first birdhouse, I put the rounded edges on both layers of the roof if that makes sense but once you go and you put all the layers down um, the roof just comes together anyway so the second one I did not put rounded edges on the top half if that makes any sense just because it looks a bit silly um, 
with the rounded edges in the middle so I definitely like it better with just the rounded edges on the first layer of the roof but after I had the scalloped edges then I just went ahead and did another layer of the pieces that don't have a scalloped edge and I did do three layers of popsicle sticks on each layer of the roof so all together it is six layers and if you cut your popsicle sticks I did um, nine sixteenths of an inch on each popsicle stick um, piece not all of them came out perfectly but I would definitely recommend doing three quarters of an inch just because it's much easier to work with when the pieces are a little bit longer. After I did my roof, I went ahead and cut two pieces of popsicle sticks for the middle part just to make the peak of the roof look a bit more finished. So after I had both of my roofs finished, I went ahead and just sanded the edges of the stir sticks and then I um, vacuumed up the dust just so that way when I was gluing them together I um, didn't have a bunch of dust all over the place. So after I vacuumed it up I went ahead and just laid five stir sticks side by side and um, I did want to mention too that I get my packs of stir sticks from Home Depot. They're only 99 cents for the larger packs as well as the smaller packs. So if you happen to be there, definitely pick some up. Sorry about that audio in that last little piece. My microphone died and I had to wait till it charged. But anyway, after I lined up my uh, stir sticks. I just took some larger popsicle sticks. I measured um, the length of the stir sticks. I cut it and then I took some hot glue and just glued those down. That way um, I could glue this together. And then with the ends that I did cut off, I did just end up putting those in the middle just for more support and stability. And um, you can use whatever glue you like hot glue is just the quickest drying so that's why I used it. So after I have those all put together I just took my favorite stained Jaco bean surprise surprise and I just took a paper towel and I started by staining the edges the rougher edges you just need to dab. I always use a paper towel just because it's just easier and you just throw it away when you're done and you don't have to worry about um, you know wasting a cloth or anything like that but you can use a cloth, paper towel, paintbrush, whatever you want. After I did the edges I did go ahead and just stain the middle piece and these are going to be the part where your lanterns hang off. Next, I just took a brush, and because these shingles are so small, that's why I'm using a brush. I wanted to make sure that I could get in between and on the edges, so I just take my brush and I stain the whole entire roof, including the edges, and then at the end, um, where the scalloped edges are, I did make sure that I went around each and every edge, and then... Um, I did go ahead and paint the underside of the roof on the front and the back just so that way if you have these up high then you can't see the natural wood shining through. So after I stained the roof I went ahead and worked on the candlesticks. I used Waverly chalk paint. You could use spray paint. Um, I just had sh uh, shiny black spray paint. That's why I went ahead with the Waverly chalk paint just because I like that matte look. It really looks old and rustic. So I just go ahead and give these two good coats of the Waverly chalk paint and let them dry in between coats. Don't be stupid like me and impatient. If you try to paint while it while the first coat is still wet then it will pull the paint off when you try to go over it again. 
Next, I just take a smaller paintbrush and I dip it into my white Waverly chalk paint and I just go around and accentuate all those beautiful details. When you use black on these, you cannot really see the details and I love to just take some white or silver paint and just go over them and um, I really love the way that it turns out when I do this, but as always, it's up to you. If you don't like this look, then you can skip this part or just do it a bit lighter. Um, whichever you prefer is uh, going to be the best thing to do. So after I go ahead and bring out all those details, I do go ahead and just take the excess paint that was in the brush. I do not dip my brush back in when I go ahead and dry brush on. I would normally use a chip brush, which is linked in my Walmart favorites, to do the dry brushing, but because I had already used this, I did just go ahead and dry brush with this brush on these uh, candle holders. So after I did the candle holders, I took some ink Waverly chalk paint and a chip brush and I do go ahead and dry brush these birdhouses to make them look old and weathered. So I start by just doing the front edges and then I do go around the circle and I think that's my favorite part on this. I love the way that that came out when I dry brushed around it. And then I go ahead and do the sides and the back and also um, the piece that this birdhouse is sitting on. I did go ahead and dry brush that as well right around the edges and then I just dragged the brush across the bottom edge. Um, I just thought that it looked good like that. Again, it's your preference. If you don't like the dry brushing, then skip this step. So after I have all the painting done, I go ahead and take some E6000 and some hot glue. And I do this because the E6000 is going to last but the hot glue is going to dry really quickly. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. And then that way um, you know that it's not gonna go anywhere, but you also know that it's not just gonna pop right off with hot glue. Sometimes when you use hot glue on glass, um, it, it tends to not last long or last at all. Sometimes things won't stick at all when you're using hot glue with glass. So that's why I do that. And that project is done. And I did want to mention that I did two just because I like to put like two on the side of something. Um, like I showed you guys in the beginning intro of the video. Um, I, I just like doing that. You could do one of these, two of these, 10 of these. That's totally up to you. So after I brought my lanterns back in from being outside, I did end up spray painting the back and spray paint does stick to just the plastic. So you can actually skip the first step of painting these white. If you do have white spray paint, if you don't, then just give these two good coats front and back of white Waverly chalk paint. So I just took my uh, drill and I took out the hangers on all four and then I take some ink Waverly chalk paint and do the exact same thing that I did with the birdhouses and I just dry brush all around the edges. If you guys have been around for any amount of time, you know that I love to do this. I just, it goes with all my other decor and it, it just blows my mind how good that dry brushing can make uh, something look so old and weathered and just that rustic farmhouse feel and um, after I go ahead and dry brush all four I go ahead and take the hangers again after I took them out I'm going to glue them back just a little bit farther up because I want these to hang out of the lantern where they're screwed they're kind of like hidden but we're gonna hang um, these lanterns from that so I definitely needed them to be um, hanging out the top so you only need to do that to one so you only need two basically because you're only gonna do it to one side 
and then I go ahead and glue use some hot glue around the top and bottom edge and then I just glue those together and this is going to give you a whole lantern instead of a half of lantern and really I am just so blown away by how these turned out and for only two bucks for just the lantern you just cannot beat it I've seen stuff like this in Walmart for much much more after I glued those together I went ahead and dry brush around um, these hanging pieces and then after I did the edges I went ahead and dry brushed in the middle I was going to use a white paint pen and kind of outline um, the each stir stick but I decided against it and I also wanted to mention to you that I thought I had plant hangers when I went the other day but I cannot find them in my bag anywhere so I did have to improvise definitely use plant hangers um, they're going to be much easier because you can screw them in but I actually had these leftover pegboard um, hangers I guess you want to call them so I did just go ahead and use some E6000 and hot glue to glue them down and then I just let them dry really really good and in the meantime I went ahead and painted them with some ink Waverly chalk paint just so that way you couldn't see the shiny uh, silver part of them so I probably will go back and get the plant hangers and just um, replace these soon I'm gonna do a bedroom makeover with farmhouse decor let me know if that's something you want to see in the comments down below so I definitely will be using these then and then I just threw some greenery in there turned on the little candle and hung them up and that is it you guys let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite thank you so so much for stopping by I always enjoy chatting with you guys on Fridays for the premiere as well as down in the comments below so definitely leave me a hello and let me know if you're new or if you've been around a lot of you guys that I talk to every week I know that you've been around but I do see a lot of new faces every uh, week and I just love getting those messages so again thank you so much for stopping by don't forget to give this a big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you guys next time bye Stop running now With you I found my peace somehow Let go of every thought that was holding me back yeah.